cities continue to jam up with more and more traffic, with many city centres taxing cars or banning them altogether. Car manufacturers have produced different types of small city cars that have lower emissions and can fit into tight parking spots, and small EVs can get around some of those restrictions cities have imposed on cars. BMW, who has been making motorcycles since 1920, decided to take a different tack. They proposed a motorcycle that offered protection against the elements while the rider, or should that be a driver, didn't need to wear a crash helmet. Just how did they persuade governments that this was safe, and what became of BMW's experiment into urban commuting vehicles? This is the BMW C1 story. BMW is no stranger to tiny vehicles powered by motorcycle engines. They produced the Isetta from 1955, a bubble car with a tiny 247cc engine based on an Italian design. Inexpensive vehicles helped a battered German economy get back on its feet, but the Isetta was only one of many bubble cars produced around Europe. Soon customers wanted something a little larger, a little bit more powerful, and a little bit more refined. Covered motorcycles had been tried before, such as the Quasar recumbent motorcycle released in 1976. It used a Reliant Robin 850cc engine, which gave it a top speed over 100 miles an hour on a good day. The bike included conveniences such as a windscreen wiper and a heater, along with storage in the rear panniers. Unfortunately, sales were slow, and only seven were made in the bike's initial run. More were produced under license, but in the end, only 21 Reliant engine quasars made their way into customers' hands. Probably the most striking enclosed motorcycle was the 1984 Ecomobile, a low-slung bike that looked like it was inspired by the light cycle from the movie Tron. It provided complete protection from the weather, and to ensure the bike didn't fall over when it slowed down, small outrigger wheels folded down from the sides. Speed was pretty extreme, but so was the price at upwards of £40,000. The Ecomobile and its follow-up, the 2006 Mono Tracer, were less practical and more an expensive plaything. A more down-to-earth covered motorcycle was the 1990 Honda Gyro Canopy. It was based on the 1982 Honda Gyro and 1985 Honda Gyro Up, putting a canopy on the existing three-wheeled motorcycle. The covering is purely for weather protection. There's no attempt to make this into any kind of crash structure. BMW's motorcycle division was looking to expand its appeal to more riders. With city streets becoming increasingly congested, they felt a city scooter that could transport white-collar workers around town without having to wear cumbersome leathers or protective clothing would appeal to BMW's affluent customer more than something like the Honda Gyro Canopy that looked more like you were trying to deliver pizza. BMW struck on the idea of making a bike so safe that the rider didn't need to wear a crash helmet, and so mess up their highly coiffured hairstyle. It's something that I'm constantly frustrated by. A prototype was shown in 1992, but it would take five years until management gave the project the green light. The bike would use an extruded aluminium frame to create a protective cell around the rider, along with a frontal crash structure. It went through extensive tests to ensure that, when the rider was wearing the two aviation-style seatbelts that held them in place, they'd be safe if the bike fell over or if they were involved in a crash. Shoulder height roll bars were added for additional protection, producing a car-like safety cell. BMW said the protection was so good that it was comparable to many small European cars. Construction was contracted out to Bertoni, using engines from the Austrian company Rotax. This limited BMW's exposure to risk in case the bike wasn't a success. They didn't need to ramp up large-scale production at a factory. They could rely on costlier but smaller-scale production. If the bike was a success, they could always bring manufacturing in-house. The 
The BMW C1 was launched in 2000 with a big fanfare, and the bike was featured in their car showrooms. BMW touted its ability to allow commuters to get around while remaining dry, revolutionising city travel. Bavarian-based BMW even persuaded the local police department to use a few of them, but they were unlikely to catch many speeding motorists. The 125cc engine had lacklustre performance due to the bike's heavy weight. But it wasn't intended as a performance bike, rather for short commuter hops, and the automatic CVT gearbox made riding easy. Plus, that small engine had the advantage it could get car beating fuel economy up to 81 miles per gallon. The base model cost £3,400 when it launched, or the equivalent of about €7,000 today. That's pretty pricey for something that was essentially a scooter with a roof, and for only a little more you could actually buy a car, but this was a BMW scooter with BMW quality. They were attempting to make a motorcycle that was more car-like. A windscreen wiper allowed you to see ahead with handy air vents just beneath, and instead of having to haul a motorcycle onto its stand, two easy to use levers did the job for you. If you wanted, you could opt the safety with ABS or swap the opaque roof for a sunroof. An immobiliser would keep your C1 safe, and there were other options such as a reading light, lockable glove box with power socket, and heated seat and hand grips. They even offered an optional sound system that adjusted the volume based on the engine revs. On the back of the bike there were three options, a luggage rack, a seat for pillion passengers who were exposed to the elements, or a large lockable box that allowed you to store your bits. And in the UK and Sweden that box became really useful. BMW had worked with many European countries to get an exemption to the law that motorcycle riders needed to wear a crash helmet. They'd been successful with some countries, but Sweden and the UK were party poopers who refused to agree. This may or may not be related, but remember this was about the time that BMW decided to abandon the British car industry by selling Rover. So that large storage box on the back of your British or Swedish bike would have to hold a crash helmet when you weren't using it, while oddly enough you didn't actually need to wear seat belts. This likely dampened sales in both countries. Customer adoption was slow, despite BMW offering a more powerful 176cc version in 2001, oddly enough called the BMW C1 200. Potential customers felt it was a heavy bike, especially for people new to motorcycles, and the high centre of gravity was unnerving. Although BMW had spent a lot of time ensuring the bike wouldn't be affected too much by crosswinds, some people still felt that this was a problem. The C1 was intended to keep the rider dry, but they could still get their shoulders wet. This caused concern that the rider's best business attire could get damaged, but this could easily be alleviated by wearing a coat. But riding at slow speeds, and in particular cornering with such a heavy bike, could be awkward and took time to master, which could put many new riders off when testing it out. When winter came, some found snow and ice riding treacherous. The sound system's clever rev-based volume control never seemed to quite get it right, and on the whole the volume seemed a little insipid. The windscreen had pillars that riders sometimes needed to look around, and on cold days the windscreen created a vortex that left riders with a very cold head. <laughs> At least that last one wasn't a problem in the UK or Sweden. The C1 got competition with a slightly cheaper 2001 Benelli Adiva. Its roof wasn't for crash protection, it was simply to keep the weather off, and handily folded up into the rear storage box. This meant you could have a regular open top scooter, or a roof and a cavernous storage box. But if you were tall, you could bang your head on the windscreen if you stopped quickly. You could also get a pillion passenger under that canopy, in a pinch at any case. Honda would also jump on the covered motorcycle bandwagon with a concept that was more stylish than the utilitarian hero canopy. The Honda Elysium was a two-seater, powerful 750cc motorcycle, but the concept didn't go into production. It wasn't the competition that dragged on C1 sales, but all those disadvantages that were putting customers off. 
Traditional motorcycle riders didn't like it because it was a compromise scooter and car owners didn't like it because it didn't fit their needs. In 2003, BMW saw the writing on the wall and ended production after selling only 34,000 bikes. A spokesperson said at the time, people didn't tear it out of our hands the way we'd imagined. Over time, BMW would say the C1 was ahead of its time, a common refrain when talking about daring ideas that were abject failures. They eventually allowed Citroën to use the C1 name for their city car, and the Citroën C1 would be seen a great deal more on city streets than BMW C1. But this wasn't quite the end. In 2009, BMW would showcase an electric version of the C1 as the C1e. Lithium-ion batteries gave the bike a range of up to 68 miles, but the same issues that put people off the C1 remained, and the C1e remained just a concept. BMW wouldn't attempt a covered motorcycle again. They would build a scooter, the more conventional C600 Sport and C650 GT, but that wouldn't stop others looking into the idea. Peugeot would produce their High Motion 3 concept in 2008 and Toyota the iRoad in 2013. However, neither of these captured the public's imagination and stayed merely concepts. While city cars have gone on to sell respectably, it seems the covered motorcycle has yet to find a market. But that's not to say that the BMW C1 doesn't have its supporters. Owners are fiercely loyal. Many have purchased several C1s to ensure that they have enough spare parts to continue riding, while mostly staying dry for years to come. Unfortunately, sales were slow and only seven were made in the bike's initial run. War, 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 war and so messed up their highly coiffured haze. Construction was contracted out to Bertoni using engines from the Australian Australian company Australian company Rotax. Australia, right next to Germany. And the automatic CVT gearbox made riding EV 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 DV Easy DV. This mail made They would build a scooter. They would all the emphasis is wrong, and that's a wrap.